<laughs> Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramp, and that was Josh Cook on Josh the piano Cook. there. I see you brought some toys. Yeah, I brought my uh, Lego Scout Trooper. Nice. Uh, to advertise Saturday, our last Saturday drop-in. Yep, our last Saturday drop-in is this Saturday. You guys can check that out by logging on to MCAT.org for more information about that. But also, we usually uh, cut uh, kids off from our Saturday drop-ins to help uh, promote our summer camps, which are happening this summer as yeah. well. It's happening in the last week in June and pretty much all of July. You, know, you, you can sign up or you can come on down here. Animation uh, camp. Yeah, MCAT.org okay. or visit here, uh, MCAT, anytime. So uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the news that's happening in and around the area. It's warm outside. Uh, there's not much to say about the weather. It's just very beautiful with in the 70s and some days in the 80s, so I'm just going to skip over weather because we're going to talk a little thing about whooping cough because whooping cough has broken the triple digit mark as of Tuesday when 101 confirmed cases of pertussis has affected both vaccinated and unvaccinated folks. Missoula County Health Department are looking into hiring more nurses to test for the highly infectious disease that has spread from three sentinel kids at high, uh, um, in the Missoula area to over 100. And so far, there's almost 2,000 identified close contacts to the uh, people who have it. There are currently 82 um, pending um, cases, uh, pending um, uh, tests for, of pertussis in 18 schools across the county, and th it has basically reached the average age, age group of every single age group in the, uh, um, the schools as well. Health officials are still encouraging people to t take the DTAP vaccine and any necessary boosters because it will lessen the symptoms if you do get sick. And the whole idea is that this vaccine is about 70 to about 80 percent effective. Um, much like the measles, which is about 90%. In other local news, for the past couple weeks, Miss Montana, not the, um, the beauty pageant winner, but a plane, it's the DC-3 World War II type plane, took off Sunday to fly around the city of the, the Missoula Valley to get a test flight before it's going to be uh, commemorating the 75 years since D-Day. So it's going to be going over to uh, Normandy, France. It's going to fly over and it's going to have people jump from the plane. Uh, Mr. Uh, so if we take a quick look, I have a video of what the plane is going to look like, uh, of what the plane looks like. So here it is from the uh, museum of at the, at the uh, Missoula International Airport. Miss Montana, this is going to be flying over to Normandy. And um, the Hudson River, it's going to fly over to the Statue of Liberty. The squadron leaves next day, uh, May 19th, from Oxford, uh, Waterbury Airport to Connecticut and heads across the North Atlantic, across the original Bru uh, Blue Spruce route to England, where it will be flying. Uh, across the English Channel t t towards um, France, I believe. So you can find out more by uh, checking out the Missoulian. You can check out uh, their, uh, I believe, their website, which is um, Miss Montana uh, Flight, or uh, I think it's flightovernormandy.org. Um, so in other news, Governor Steve Bullock has officially made his bid for presidency of 2020. Uh, and with many already on the ticket, including Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders, there's quite an uphill battle for Bullock. In other Montana news, Helena Mayor uh, Wilmot Collins uh, announced on Monday that he plans to have run for a higher office. What office? We don't know. The office would either be governor, senator, or U.S. rep. It's still up in the air. And uh, he, he ran for mayor of Helena, which won and got national attention as being one of the first black um, mayors in the state of Montana since its um, creation, basically. Uh, Wilmot, Wilmot became, uh, so far, Collins was elected a nonpartisan ticket, but if he's going to be running for any of the Senate, Governor, or U.S., he's going to have to pick a side. So, And so right now he's saying... Um, He's, limiting, he's, uh, he's not limiting himself, but when he's asked his, his party affili affiliation, he said, I'm exploring as an American. Oh. Okay, Wilmot's uh, campaign manager, uh, Trent uh, Bul uh, Bulger, 
uh, became CFO of the Montana Ger Democratic Party in 2008. So, so far, no official run has been announced, just an announcement for a higher office. So it's kind of an announcement for an announcement. So in international news, the trade war between U.S. and China is affecting uh, many, many of the stock markets. Uh, the Trump administration is, uh, is preparing a new list of $300 billion worth of Chinese imports that would be hit with tariffs to up to 25% after China uh, retaliated Monday with the trade war be between the two world's largest economies. The new exchange of tariffs comes nearly a year after the Trump administration imposed the first set of tariffs on Chinese goods last summer. President Trump says that China unfairly subsidizes its industry, doesn't respect intellectual property rights, and makes it difficult for U.S. companies to compete in China's market. On Tuesday morning, Trump tweeted, we can make a deal with China tomorrow before their companies start leaving so as not to lose USA business, but the last time we were close, they wanted to renegotiate the deal. No way. Last week, a soybean farmer in Virginia told NPR that his situation has only gotten worse with falling prices and difficulties in getting loans amid the uncertain market. And that farmer, John um, Wesley Boyd Jr., said that he hasn't got any relief from the government, as was promised. China was buying $14 billion in U.S.-produced soybeans every year, nearly a third of American crops. So the U.S. Uh, $300 billion proposal will enter a public comment period and could take effect sometime in late June or July. So that's going on with that. We have a guest here talking about his book, um, Once on the Isle of Spice. It is a murder mystery, and we'll have more information about this as we come back right after an art clip. Guys, we're back here with Claude Alec, and he is here to talk about Once on the Isle of Spice. It's a book that he wrote. It is a mystery, but it's more than just a mystery. Tell us a little bit more about your book. Uh, Once on the Isle of Spice is a story. Uh, it contains three love stories, a murder mystery, betrayal, and an escape from prison. It's yeah. yeah. Well, and what sets this apart? Because I'm thinking that this is like, oh, I think of uh, mod, like noirs. It's like who done it kind of uh, books, but you said that there's more to this book because um, it involves religion, voodoo, and other things like that. Right, right. This, you know, this, the story surrounds, uh, there's a lot of magical realism in the story, and the story surrounds the idea that there was a group of uh, ex-slaves, murdered ex-slaves, uh, trapped in a field of cane in a place called the Valley of Bones. And uh, the main character in the story must uh, get them freed from the Valley of Bones in order for the village and everything to survive. Mm -hmm. And so that is, that is his mission. Nice. Oh, who, is, who is the main protagonist of this? The story? main protagonist is a fellow called Ezekiel Augustine. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Augustine. Oh, Augustine. that's really cool. Yeah. So uh, yeah. tell us a little bit more about this character. What drives him? What, what is his motivation? Well, you know, early in the story, there's a, a fella that's in jail, and he's in jail. He's, he's one of the love stories. His girlfriend was drowned and so forth, and he is in jail. And uh, Ezekiel wants to find out why he's in jail. Hmm. So nobody would tell him exactly why he's in jail, so, he's, oh. so, so he decided to go on a mission to find that out himself. 
and the setting is very, very tropical, um, once in the Isle of Spice, as you can see in this cover right here. And apparently it's an uh, Afro-Caribbean area, so it's going to be kind of basically in the Gulf of Mexico? Uh, no, it's island of Grenada. Oh, Grenada. Which, right. And it's, um, the story sort of takes place in a village, in a village called Jean Anglais. Yeah. And uh, it's all the villages or uh, you know, milling around and doing things because times are changing for them. They are, uh, the government has just got permission to be self, the island will be self-governed. So people are coming into the village and oh. speaking to them about it and so forth. But the superstition is still there and everybody is still wondering, hmm, are these real people? Are these spirits? Where do they come from? You know, it's that kind I of see. thing. Yeah. It's like yeah. strangers, anything unknown is ultimately... Uh, seen as something that could be um, untrustworthy, superstitious. Exactly. You know, any any kind of changes. It's like, wait a minute, this is uh, this is a test. Right. This could be a test. You know, from the spirits, it could be. You know, that. So they ask him all kind of question, and one of the old people in the village started telling him stories about a time when God and the devil shared a, a, a dwelling on the top of the mountain, right outside of the village, hmm. and you know, and the, yeah. So uh, what, what is the biggest thing you want people to take away from this book once they read it? Well, uh, you know, in the day and age, you know, that we live in now, it seems that foreign, foreign things are kind of pushed aside and, you know, not really taken. So this is a, that all of these are universal themes. We are all human beings and we all, you know, we all need to learn to live together. So that is a part of, a part of the story. I, re I remember once reading, uh, this friend of mine gave me a little book called Rotten Rejections. And the, um, <clears throat> one of the ones that come to mind is the one that uh, a rejection for Pearl Box, The Good Earth. And the things, uh, one of the, the editors said to her, uh, sorry to inform you that there's no one in America interested in anything in China. You know, how, how, how <laughs> wow. that's kind of me. It is pretty crazy. It's crazy, crazy, yeah. but you know, I mean, it's because a classic. Because everything that, uh, a lot of things that we don't understand, it, like we're, even though we're not directly inf affected by China, we're definitely indirectly affected by China. Right, right. And the same thing can be said about uh, your book as well, is that uh, like you have a lot of the old, and then of course you have a lot of the new uh, colliding with one another, and it's just basically growing pains. Right, like, right. You know, it's a change. Right. Like, um, so let's talk a little bit about the uh, religion that's in it because you're talking a lot about voodoo um, and so Obia, Obia? Ob right, Obia, yeah. yeah. So let's talk a little bit about that. About that. What is that? Obia is a kind of a, a, it's a, it's a kind of a relative of voodoo and um, there's a name of it as they practice it in Grenada. Um, and the, one of the, how it works in the book is that this uh, gentleman, English gentleman, comes, a uh, fundamentalist preacher, comes to the village and start trying to convert everybody to Christianity. And uh, there will be a woman is telling people, uh-uh, don't go his way. <laughs> he, could be a, he could be an evil spirit. Don't, don't do anything with him. Ah, uh, they don't listen to him. And they start building a church and so forth. And she, uh, she just sit back and watch the whole thing develop. <laughs> oh, wow. It, it's interesting. Like, um, in this book, it kind of seems like there's different narratives throughout the whole entire book. It's like, you have the people who are kind of watching things happen. There, You have people who are trying to stop this from happening. And then you have other people whose motives are to basically modernize. It's like, you guys now own your own country. Now what? Right, right. So that, that, that it's very interesting. Uh, it, there's, it looks like there's, it's like, from what I heard from this, is like, oh, murder mysteries. But it's just more than that. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The murder mystery is sort of layered in there. It's got a nuance in there. But the, the main theme of the thing is change. It is change. Uh, because, you know, the main character, as he grows up, he realizes that it would be a very interesting thing to buy the whole valley the, with all the cane fields and uh, turn it into a giant farming co-op. So that was another motivating factor for him. And he uh, finally, uh, there's a blight hits the cane called red rot, and the cane starts dying, so he sees the opportunity to buy the piece of land with money from all, from his various mm -hmm. sources. So uh, 
where can people uh, find this book and where can they find more information about you? Uh, the book can be uh, is Shakespeare and Company, uh, Fact and Fiction, online. Yeah, it's, all, it's all over the place. Yeah. Where it can so be. if you guys want to check out this book, it is a very, uh, like, it, it feels like it's a um, one of a kind for sure. Because I've never heard of anything like the settings or anything like this. So it's very interesting to see how... Uh, I'm definitely going to read it for sure because I just bought the book from Claude. <laughs> but uh, it's called Once on the Isle of Spice. And you guys can get it at the lo uh, any local Missoula bookstore. All right. Yeah. Is that anything else you want to say? Yeah. Well, I'm a longtime Missoulian. I've lived here for over uh, 42 years. It's, uh, it's been a, it's a pleasure to live here. Made it home. My kids are born here. It's, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, Claude. Yeah. And this is Claude Alec. He's the author of Once on the Isle of Spice. So uh, we'll be right back right after this. Hey, everybody. Welcome, yeah. back, to, welcome <laughs> back to a new episode of Dude, I Just Drew. Special guest, Alex. Alex. Palmer. That's uh, my name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Today's special day because guess what? It's 11th episode. 11th. Um, Let's talk about the rules. It's like we... 10, but one more. Yes. Um, we're gonna. We got five minutes per drawing. Five, five each. We're gonna draw. Uh, it's timed, as I said. Um, five rounds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's just coin cut, coin cut, coin cut, coin cut, And then there's a toss. Bing. Oh. Oh. All right. I'm pretty sure everybody knows what the rules are. And now you guys know what the rules are, whatever. May the best artist win. It will be me. First one is table race. Ooh. Whose is that? It wasn't mine. Austin Rand. I think it's his. <laughs> yeah. Austin, Austin Rand also. Oh, no. Okay, table race. That could, that could mean anything. Might have been Scott. Oh, wait, no, that, yeah, no, that's mine. Oh, okay. <laughs> that I was right. Been. You know, you know what I'm all about. <laughs> you know what I'm all about. You've seen episode... Nine? I don't know. <laughs> Are those birds in the sky? Are they? I mean, they're <laughs> Are they? Are they clouds? Puffy clouds? I think they're be. bushes. They could be bushes. It yeah. could be whatever you want. It's art. Art is an interpretive Art is interpretive. <laughs> is this interpretive dance? <laughs> oh, this, that's the type of art no, I've, this is I've been doing. It's interpretive art. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Let's have. Get some coffee medicine, bro. <laughs> I'd be a bully. Rowan, do you want a fruit chew? Do I want a fruit chew? No, I don't want to. <laughs> that would be mean to me. Dude, Stop! Stop! Stop throwing things at me. You have to chew now, Rowan. Be thankful. <laughs> that is the master race of nice. table. I don't know. Whoa! <laughs> um, one day this thing will take over. <laughs> how, how you will die. How you will die. I think it's probably not a good idea for me to draw a noose. <laughs> I feel like I just made everybody sad. So. <laughs> That's just my natural state, so I mean... <laughs> Don't worry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> there, there we go. Ah, uh, hey. Hey! It's not copyrighted. I'm done, I'm done killing myself, okay? It's not copyrighted <laughs> if you do it on Facebook. <laughs> there you go, guys. A zombie vegetarian? Ooh. Zombie. Ooh. Zombie vegetarian? Ooh. It's gonna remind me of a webtoon. <laughs> I think I know which one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> From the past, the present, to the future, man. It's not allowed. <laughs> Did you say vegetables are made for you? <laughs> <laughs> it's a zombie carrot. 
right. It's a zombie, actual vegetarian <laughs> zombie. <laughs> wow, how original! <laughs> I'm gonna take this in a really depressing, uh, depressing turn, because that's well, what thanks. this episode is. So Gee, thanks! Guy. There's a zombie trying to get inside to this person who's in a hospital bed, because they're a vegetable. <laughs> oh, 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 I get it. <laughs> Aliens. I don't know. What do, they, what do the jokes sound like? Like what? What is happening? <laughs> what? So, uh, the aliens yeah. have noticed Solid Snake, and so they all have. <laughs> Exclamation points wow. above their head. That's what I <laughs> That's genius. <laughs> oh, okay. I already see where this is going. I don't. You never play games? Don't play. <laughs> you never play Smash Brothers or. Well, I also can't wow. see half the time. So. Or Ness Undertale? Yeah. That's... So this is from the game Undertale. Yeah, it's Undertale. Uh, starring. Starring. Sam? Yeah, sense for Whoever doesn't detail. know that, look it up and you'll understand. Yeah, I understand what we're talking about. Clothes on sheep action. What? What? Action? What do you mean by Clothes action? Clothes on sheep action. Clothes? I don't... Austin, was this you? No! <laughs> <laughs> well, those are bushes. What are bushes? Oh yeah, the clouds in the background are definitely giant bushes. They're sheep, dude. Not on the ground. Oh yeah, those sheep are sheep. Bobbity bobbity. So my first thought is, Arthur's going to shoot me. He kind of looked like like if you. Uh, changed a couple things. He could have been a sheep, but, but. I, I do. <laughs> do you feel lucky? Do you feel, feel I'm lucky? Saying, like a Punk? sheep voice, though. <laughs> how, do you, how do you make that? Sheep don't <laughs> speak, <laughs> though. <laughs> ba. 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 No, Rona's won way too many times, so I think we're just gonna hand this one over to Alex. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations, Alex. You did it. Mm. Oh man, my name's Rowan. You guys suck. I hate you guys. Ha ha ha. Hey, Rowan. It looks like I beat you. Oh man. You Darn see this it. guy? I uh, I beat him really, really bad. Um, no, because I'm Rowan. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this Dude I Just Drew episode. Sorry our audio cut out. Well, check out me on my Instagram, NoWar2999. I make the best web comics. No, you don't. Shut up or I'll stab you with my pen. <laughs> well, our finale is next week, so hopefully you can join us there. Well, looks like my time here is done. My so name's Alex. See Paul. you later. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that was a uh, uh, dude I just drew. Um, um, it, it traveled to Angel Island. I don't know, something like that. Uh, but that was episode 11. And yeah, uh, I wasn't there for that because I was running um, a spot for Jesus. Newsies. So there you go. So uh, you ran tech that time. <laughs> don't, don't. <laughs> what did you think? <laughs> Don't at me for that. Yeah. yeah, maybe I accidentally cut out the last seven minutes of audio, but it's honest mistake. It was the first time thing. Yeah. I mean, like, I've run TriCaster for sports and stuff, but I've never run Wirecast. Which that is was, very... Um, that's a it's, lot. It's basically like like running Avid and editing software, where it's like very like one-centric, where it's just like you can do something with one thing, yeah. but you can't do a lot of things with what you'd expect to use. Yeah, with. I, I definitely went in the deep end. And I apologize for my suggestion. <laughs> All right. So, um, um, Julia Just True is going to happen again this Saturday. It's going to be the season finale. It's episode 12. And you can check out more information about Dude I Just Drew by logging on to their Facebook page, Dude I Just Drew, at DJI Drew. Yeah, that's the at sign. Nice. So you can at them at DJI Drew. Cool. Even though DJI isn't that like the uh, drone. Yeah, that's, yeah. The, that's the company that makes the drones. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. 
So uh, other kind of like quick news. I, I got a call the other night being like, hey, um, someone's doing a capstone project at Hellgate. I'm just like, okay. And it was like, do you do drones? Like, yeah, we don't check out drones. I was like, well, yeah. you know, would it be cool? I was like, I guess I could do it. <laughs> yeah, no, we don't trust like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, like. Also, we're just like we're we're pretty new to the drone scene. So, yeah. Like, I mean, honestly, I'm like the best drone pilot, even though I crashed it. Yeah. And then second is Neil because he only has so many hours put into it. I mean, can you call yourself a drone pilot if you haven't crashed it at least once? Yeah. I mean, Harrison Ford crashes plane at least like a dozen times. Yeah. Yeah, he's a he's a registered pilot, but he's crashed so many different times. Yeah. Yeah. Can you really call yourself a commercial airline pilot if you haven't crashed at least once? No. So, I, um, are you ready for some city council? No. All right, let's do it anyways. Sick. So, uh, at the city council, they talked about a lot of things. And uh, public comment was fairly short and uh, harped on the city's effort to curve single-use bags that have uh, been littered on highways earlier this year. Mm -hmm. And when Brendan Work was really impressed with the city's attempts towards addressing these needs. Um, and so far, here is... Let's see, here's Brendan Work. I'm heartened that you took that, uh, that proposal seriously. I was reading an article that said um, uh, one city council member needs to step up and push that proposal through, so I'm encouraging you again to um, continue with that in mind. Um, it gives me heart that this uh, city council has the, the interests of my, uh, my children at heart. Um, and I would also further encourage you to keep the interests of those uh, most marginalized people in the community at heart as well. Um, uh, a couple of my friends would like to uh, speak today about the issue of uh, a warming shelter in Missoula for those uh, who are experiencing homelessness. And I think that that is um, a really, really great next step for the city council to consider. So. All right, so that was Brendan Work, and he was talking a little bit about uh, the bags, and so far Stacey Anderson and Heidi West have taken upon themselves to work on um, an ordinance that would help ban um, single-use plastic bags within the city limits. So we'll talk more about that later on. Up next, we have a man, uh, Shay Staney, who spoke about being homeless, and misdemeanors go hand-in-hand -hand since sleeping outside in a public place gets you a ticket. So here is uh, Shay Staney. I just wanted to speak off that, being formerly homeless myself, um, you find yourself, you live on the streets, you find yourself uh, with misdemeanors for all kinds of things, like there's no public restroom, so you get a misdemeanor for, you know, pissing in public, you know, open container, you know, when you could drink a beer at home, or maybe not drink a beer. Um, but it's a, it's quite a cycle um, when you get denied for your get denied your vouchers um, to certain places because you know the cycle is never going to stop unless you put a stop to it. You know this kind of thing is cyclical. You know no one's going to be like, oh well, I got a ticket for pissing in public. I guess I'm not going to piss anymore. You can't do that. You know it's just it doesn't work that way. Um, and I would personally like to see um, some more focus on. Uh, that you do trace records uh, five years back. I realize that maybe uh, less focus on, you know, simple misdemeanors. You know, you're going to occur simple misdemeanors as homeless, while homeless. And, uh, you know, if the Missoula Housing Authority is really going to, really going to pay heed to their uh, tenure plan and homelessness, they can't be denying homeless folk uh, housing for simple misdemeanors. All right, so that was Brendan uh, Shay uh, Staney talking a little bit um, about being homeless in the city of Missoula. And uh, so far, uh, there was somebody who spoke um, up about certain misdemeanors of certain people, is that they uh, do allow people to stay in the palace apartments if they have it and accept those vouchers. So that's one um, thing that was said after the fact. Um, up next, we uh, were talking about, um, let's see, where was I? Oh yeah, so we're, we're, we're switching gears. There was a proclamation that was said, and um, yesterday was day, de day of Decency Day. So today, anything goes. And Jeanette Rankin, Executive Director of Betsy Milken Day, spoke on the proclamation about common decency for Decency Day. This word, decency, it is the foundation of how we should interact and treat each other 
as human beings and fellow citizens in a community. It's a foundation of peace, and I believe it's a foundation of no matter what our political or religious or other differences are, if we can sit down face to face and treat each other with decency and respect, I don't believe there's anything that we can't work through. All right, so that was Betsy Mulligan Day talking about the Day of Decency, which is a proclamation that uh, passed on Monday for Tuesday. All right, moving on, TB Ideas. Missoula Tourism Business Improvement District was part of a public hearing to expand the use of an ever-growing Missoula city limits. They want to encompass more hotels to contribute to this. So it's basically a $2 additional fee on your uh, on a hotel stay. It's not a tax on the residents. It's a tax on people visiting the city of Missoula. So any hotel that wishes to be a part of the um, Tourism Business Improvement District just has to up their fees by $2, and their $2 goes into bringing more people into tourism and help promote the city of Missoula. And so far, 64 events and $27 million came into the tourism last year, making Missoula second only to Bozeman, which had the 70% retention rate with Missoula's 65 retention rate within the hotels, which means how many people stay in the hotel rooms at any given time. Part of the TBIDs is a way for uh, big hotels to help contribute to the community. A $2 tax on rooms rented, residents don't pay, just tourists. Barbara Nealon, um, Destination Missoula, spoke on some of the concerns some people have about the tourist tax, basically. So this is what she had to say about this. And I know that there were a couple of issues that came up um, that were questions that um, I'd like to address for you so that you do have the answers to those. One of them was, uh, was brought up with, by one of the smaller hoteliers and, um, and Councilman Ramos. And his concern was that, that really the benefit from the TBID goes to the larger hotels and not to the smaller hotels. Um, you know, over the course of, and, and this was a concern when we very first started the TBID, and over the course of the last nine years, we have found the opposite to be true. Um, we have never had anyone, um, that we know of anyway, that has even, um, uh, as, as they've gotten their invoice, looked at what that is and, and questioned it. People are so used to, um, to the fees that are, are added on to their hotel rooms anymore that most of them don't even notice it because we do have uh, very low fees in Montana compared to so many other states. All right, so that was uh, Barbara Nielsen. Uh, Nealon, sorry. Um, of course, you know, with uh, money that helps bigger franchise hotels comes to the smaller ones. Uh, Shaylee Hall, who works for marketing at her to at her small hotel in the city of Missoula, is concerned that the trickle down is not the right way of improving tourism. And this is what she had to say about that. As working for a smaller hotel this past year, I do the hands-on marketing myself as well as the sales. I go door to door into the businesses. I let them know that we actually are in, Mo in Mo Missoula, excuse me, because a lot of them don't know. A lot of them know, you know, on reserve, that's where you get your hotels. With the TBID, if you ever look at your receipt fully and you look at your charges and your taxes, you allocate for the fact that you're paying for a room rate plus, you know, the tax for that. A TBID would have to be explained further to a guest because they would not know exactly what TBID would mean. Me telling them that is a percentage of your room rate that goes into helping us promote tourism on top of other things that Destination Missoula does, doesn't necessarily go directly into the smaller hotels. Because still, year after year, we are still doing a lot of our own sales door to door. We are trying to keep our market now with our corporate rates where she's correct. They have, a, larger hotels have a lot more money and put into marketing and grabbing sales, but we don't have that opportunity. So adding on an additional fee on top of our already mid-scale hotel would deter our travelers who can't afford the $150 a night hotel, who now can't afford, you know, the $100 hotel with the extra $2. All right. So, um, of course, there are many other factors into play as well, but I'll get into that after this next quote by City Council Member Heather Harp uh, responding to... Uh, hold on a second. I just got to get it. There we go. All right. This is the response by Heather Harp. And I understand your 
position, um, having not been able to have participated in it before, um, or that the hotel had not volunteered to do it before, I certainly hope that the $2 that each um, guests will be uh, be spending, or excuse me, paying for, that you would be able to use that in a really innovative and creative and marketing way to supplement what you have been doing already. Um, I just spent a week with my father, who's 74 years old, um, driving around California and Oregon um, to visit family, and we stayed in some um, uh, you know, franchises as well as those you know smaller hotels that really had the charm, and they and people are looking for you. You just got to figure out a way. And I think the TBIT can be a great partner in terms of trying to level the playing field. All right, and part of the uh, TBID is try to improve. Um, dealing with uh, higher taxes and higher prices for uh, basic jet fuel that goes into uh, airlines. And Missoula International Airport is definitely feeling the crunch in terms of numbers with that. And the TBID is to, uh, with even within that district over there on the airport, is trying to uh, use this as a way to um, encourage people to come through Missoula. And the more people come through Missoula, more planes and more fuel being used, the less the price of fuel goes um, in a way um, it's just a way for uh, more people to come here, and it gets people are be able to get more bang for their buck if there's uh, better tourism, better uh, uh, rate of people through here. Of course, the the city did move to expand the TBID, which basically means that since the city's boundaries lines are growing, they can now encompass more hotels. Of course, a hotel doesn't have to be part of the district. It's a it's a completely uh, voluntary service. But by volunteering the service, these two dollars per room that um, are put onto the rooms goes into help promoting tourism in the city of Missoula, help get people to come to Missoula and stuff like that. So that's kind of what the city council was all about uh, on Monday. And you can find out my more, more from this meeting by watching the whole meeting on channel 190 uh, through Spectrum. Or you can go to MCAT.org and the city's website, ci.missoula.mt.us. It is a wonderful website where you can find out everything you need to know about the city of Missoula. All right, guys. I'm going to throw it to Dub and Stuff because it is Wednesday, and Wednesday is a Dub and Stuff kind of day. So without further ado, here is called The Dance of Life from the 1929 film. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, okay, whatever. Gotta make myself look pretty. Gotta be pretty. Awesome to pre pretty. Pat, 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 powder room, pat, pat. pat oh, pat, God, pat. would you look at this place? Well, excuse me, your majesty. Listen, this got to be quick. I got a lot of powder to put all over my body, so if you don't mind. By the time you powder your body, you would have finished the Bible by now. Mmm. Is that supposed to be some kind of fat joke or something? Because I'm fat and fabulous. <laughs> What's your story, by the way? And besides, the more I eat, the more goes to my boobs, and the bigger my boobs, the more... The more men you get, I get it, because of the promiscuous lifestyle that you live. <clears throat> Just because I get mine doesn't mean you should be so jealous. I do what I do, and I get what well, I get. Well, you probably get all the diseases that come along <clears throat> with it. <clears throat> so, you really think you can talk to me that way? Well, the thing is, darling, is that I'm going to double down on more than just insults. Whoa! Did I miss something or something? <laughs> let me at her, let me at her. All right, Coco, let me handle this. You don't know what it's like to live in the shadow of someone so... Mm, don't you say big. <clears throat> because I'm not happy about this situation at all. Well, you don't understand, because she's been the queen bee for as long as I can understand. Yeah. Well... That doesn't make much sense if you really think about it. Besides, now you listen up. You're not that special. I'm very special. You gotta work yourself up like everybody else around here. I don't know where I got this accent from, but... Well, go on now. Explain yourself. I just wanted to be a star. A star, you hear? Now listen up. She's the sheriff around these queen parts. Queen Bee, I, I know I said she's a queen bee, but still. She's in charge, and you gotta work your way to become in charge. Well, she's a hack. And who are you supposed to be? Some kind of wannabe actress who wants to... Hey, look at me! Look no, at me! No, look at me! <clears throat> well, everyone's got something to prove. Here's the door. Uh, that's not as badass as I thought it would be. Fine. I'll leave. But remember this, I'll be famous! Well, 
She might actually become famous. Let's get going. Let's do the dance of life. It's time for some events that are happening. Good day. Volunteer to save the dragon, all happening this week until May 20th. Help refurbish and expand Dragon's Hollow. This will make Dragon's Hollow an all abilities playground. They need all skills and unskilled volunteers to be on the construction site. Volunteers must be at least 16 years of age to be in the area. Vol volunteers, uh, wait, wait, that's weird. Oh, the construction site is at least 16, and just volunteers in the general area outside the construction zone can be at least 10 years of age. And, you know, this is a big uh, undertaking. This uh, playground was built about eight, 18 years ago. The playground's only supposed to basically last for 20 years when it was built, and they're trying to refurbish and also expand it to a, an all-abilities playground. Basically, get rid of all the wood chips um, and just kind of replace it with that kind of like malleable, soft, uh, padded, um, basically one big giant tire that's on the ground. You know, there's, that's pretty much the easiest way to explain it. And so, yeah, you can volunteer to save the dragon. You can um, go to a, a carousel for Missoula and Dragon's Hollow to find out more information. Indoor fun, you can go to Mismo, Flying Squirrel, uh, what else, uh, Roots Acro. Uh, there's so many indoor stuff that you guys can go to, all starting around 9, 10, and even 11 a.m., and it's for uh, young kids to uh, explore their bodies in a safe and padded area. Tiny Tales is going to be at Empower Place, which is at the Missoula Food Bank, from 10.30 to 11 a.m. Hands-on science, geology rocks, get it because it's a pun, explore the wonders of rock mm. and minerals at the Discovery Bench today, starting at 11 a.m., and, and yeah, it's going to be great. Montana uh, Neuro Feedback Information Presentation Q&A. Be at your best. Neuro, uh, learn about Neuro Feedback and how to improve self-regulation -regula of brain activity. We improve cognitive, uh, cognitive function. And this is going to be at the Missoula Country Club starting at 1230. So improve your brain. Grandparents raising children support. Uh, grandparents raising grandchildren support group. Um, I don't know. Grandparents would want to raise their own children who have their own kids, but a lot of times grandparents are helping to raise some of the children, while the parents are, are usually have to have a two-income uh, kind of parental units, and the grandparents are usually the go-to for uh, babysitting. So this is a support group for any grandparents out there who will help raise their grandchildren. They usually do it every third Wednesday of the month at the Southgate Mall Community Room, starting at 1 p.m. Member Hops Happy Hour at Missouri Museum. MAM's uh, members are invited to join, join the Happy Hour at MAM. This is an unofficial closing reception for the ex uh, ex exhibition Montana Bars and Eddie's Club Adjacent uh, Adjunct Collection. Eddie's Bar is uh, basically uh, Charlie B's, but uh, before it was Charlie B's. Enjoy the light hors d'oeuvres and uh, uh, every time, like I can say hors d'oeuvres, but when I read it, I, I, I basically have to say hors d'oeuvres. Sure, Steve Years. Right, and a selection of craft beers expertly selected by Warden's Market Expert, Brewmaster Mark Thompson, um, blah, 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 informational talk, uh, Eddie's Club Photography Collection, and a recent gifts to MAM's collection. So it's $15, uh, members only. Um, oh, so you have, so uh, you can learn more about being a, a benefits of being a member at the MAM. So this is for MAM members, and it's $15. Um, you can call them at 728-0447. Again, that number is 728-0447 to RSVP. And finally, part two of an on part two of two of an ongoing um, mushroom mushroom identification. Missoula Public Library is hosting mushroom identification, and these mushrooms are great for if you guys are looking to uh, grab some mushrooms and sell them at the farmers market because they always have a bunch of mushrooms at the market that people will sell. And this is a good way to identify the ones that you can sell. And it starts at 5:30 at the Missoula Public Library. And also at the Missoula Public Library, they're having a 3D printing 101 workshop. So learn about 3D printing. You hang out there for an hour, and you learn all about, all what you need to know about 3D printing. It's pretty cool because I got a chance to go there with uh, Steve uh, Glukert, and he kind of showed all, all, all. And we uh, had uh, one of the artists um, in one of our programs, which is airing, which aired just the other night on MCAT. Look before you speak. All right, Th Thursday, uh, searching the library. 
Starting at noon, uh, this class presentation and introduction to library services available through the computers. Topics include how to search the catalog, including tips and strategies for finding uh, uh, the items you are looking for. Registration is required. You can call 721-BOOK, otherwise known as 721-2665, and this is from noon to 1 p.m. It's just to improve your uh, searchability at the library. Um, Reentry uh, simulation event, Zootown Church partners for your reintegration of Department of Cor and the Department of Corrections are co-sponsoring an experimental event to illustrate the journey of self-sufficiency for citizens for citizens reentering society from incarcerations and the barriers that can contribute to uh, reentry failure come to either identical sessions 911 or three dash one to experience a month of reentry for in a four 15 minute sessions each representing a week of reentry experiences afterwards discuss with other participants what it was like and how the community can make this journey go better and a lot of times it's really hard for a lot of people to reenter society because a lot of times um so that what you got to what, what most of the time what you have to do is um with reintegrating into society, the biggest thing is avoiding uh, some of the areas that cause um, certain behaviors to get you thrown back in jail. So a lot of times it's either people, places, um, things, and, and it's really hard because as soon as you get out of prison, a lot of the friends that you had were the ones that kind of influenced your bad decision. They're not, it's not their fault, it's your fault for being around them that encourages your bad behavior. So a lot of times growing up is a part of letting some of the things that y you hold on to, you gotta learn to let it go. And that's just, a, that's just some thing that I definitely noticed for sure. So, yep, Thursday, this is the part of the Zach after school program with kids. Um, students, the after school camp encourages kids to learn about 3D fundamentals with clay. Students will gain knowledge and inspiration by viewing ceramics produced by local and world renowned artists and explore personal and contemporary art themes to great clay wares and sculptures. And it's Thursday, kicking off. Uh, basically, it's been going on every single Thursday, and it's from 3 to 5 p.m. It's $95 or $85 if you're a member. Lego Club at Missoula Public Library, every Thursday from 3.30 to 5 p.m., you get to enjoy some Lego Club if children under 12 must be accompanied by an adult. Predator feeding, Missoula Insectarium, they'll be feeding a cricket to one of the hungry predators at 4 p.m. every Thursday. Join as they explain and demonstrate how they capture and consume prey. Come see who is hungry today. Missoula Mayhem, Karis Park. May is Bike Month. Please join um, for one or more of the many events this month. Please visit the pedalmissoula.org to view the full calendar and print your own copy of all the biking events that are happening. Missoula Mayhem is happening from 6 to 9 p.m. at Karis Park Pavilion tomorrow night. Um, it's 20 to 30 minute uh, gravel race. After exploring single and double track roads and trails, the ride will end at Flippers for food and drinks. Check the pedal Missoula Facebook page for route details closer to the event. Zombies in Zootown, this is a big event. Uh, John Nellis, uh, he uh, works with Aspire Media Program to put together another great movie this year. This year they have something new and exciting going on. The first showing will feature all the Zombies in Zootown series, including the latest, which is Zo Zombies in Zootown 4. It's a bunch of kids making a zombie movie. We do it too. It's great. It's fun. A lot of kids get to have a uh, have a good kick out of this, and money goes back into uh, the Aspire Media program to help continue this moving forward as well. Be sure to check out the trailer and actors interviews. Uh, you can go to uh, Zombies in Zootown to find out more information. Just Google that term, Zombies in Zootown, and you find all you need to know. But tomorrow night at the Roxy Theater, they're going to be premiering their fourth movie at 7:30 p.m. So. That's pretty much it for all the events that I want to talk about. There's just so much stuff going on here. Uh, do you want to play some music, bro? Thought you'd never ask. Yeah, hit it. Mm, no.
done? No, I don't know. Do you want more? Uh, we'll, we'll have plenty more at the end of the show. Jeez. <laughs> All right. But I, I don't know. Maybe I'll just look at the, at the internet a little too much. But you guys can find out more about MCAT and more by logging on to MCAT.org. You can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So next we made you write it out twice, and I'm too cheap to buy the um, wakeupmissoula.com or whatever thing. That's fair. Yeah, it's whatever. But anyways... Uh, find the latest episodes of Wake Up Missoula and other fun videos that we have produced here on our show as well as uh, dub and stuff, um, uh, Flagship Friday, interviews. Uh, once again, I want to thank Claude Alec for joining us to talk about his book, Once on the Isle of Spice, <coughs> now uh, available at your local bookstores here in the city of Missoula, Fact and Fiction, uh, Shakespeare and Company, and more. So. And you can also find it out online as well. You can look up Once on the Isle of Spice. So, yeah. Just a lot of different things. And I'm dying here, so I better end the show before I have a coughing fit. Um, hmm. Think about that. All right. So, anyways, without further ado, here is uh, Josh Cook. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. And I'm playing piano. <laughs>